Originally, this was not the trade that was supposed to be going through. Originally, it was supposed to be Kristaps Porzingis goes to the Celtics, Malcolm Brogdon goes to the Clippers, and then the Wizards get uh oh the Wizards get uh the uh, the Morris. It was a Marcus Morris. They get Marcus Morris from the Clippers. That was supposed to be and picks as well. That was supposed to be the original trade. That fell through, and near like the eleventh hour. It goes to now the Celtics, Grizzlies, and Wizards with Kristaps Porzingis going to the Celtics, Marcus Smart going to the Memphis Grizzlies, and the Washington Wizards getting Tyus Jones from the Grizzlies. An interesting trade, but the Celtics do get a shooting big man, which they haven't had, uh, at least recently. Al Horford in the playoffs was abysmal. So I want to know, this is a pretty big deal. The Celtics maybe got better. I want to know, which team do you think overall won this trade? And specifically because we follow the Celtics, did the Celtics improve after this trade? It's hard to say. I really, I've been thinking a lot about this trade, and I'm not sure. I think that uh, Przingis had a good year last year. Um, he's actually he's averaged 20 points a game pretty much uh, for the three teams that he's played for over the, his career or those teams. He's averaged more than 20 points. So. Yeah, twenty points a game from a guy that's seven foot three, and a seven foot six wingspan. I think that's pretty good. So, and I think the Celtics they don't they they've never really had for a long time. They really haven't had that dominant big guy, big guy, you know. And whether Pazingas is dominant or not, I'm not sure. But his toughness, I'm not quite sure about. And uh, but his defensive skills are good. Um, but you had to give up Marcus Smart, man. That was hard. I, I think the first trade, if the first trade had been pulled off, that would have been fantastic, right? You get to keep Marcus Smart, and you have add Pazingas too. Uh, th- you know they have to lose one of the, some of those guys. So they're not going to be able to hang on to all of them. The money just isn't going to allow it. So they gave up quite a bit to get him, I think, and uh, they only really have him for one year, right? Because he's he opted into his Dallas contract, which is this is the last year of it. So he would be a free agent again next year, uh, at the end of next year. So I, if he has, a, I'm sure he's going to try hard to have a great year. If he does, it may be one and done in Boston. So I don't know. It's it's a interesting trade. Um, I can understand why the Celtics did it. I think they're taking a risk, but the reward is the the potential for reward is also there. I will say this. It clears up something that the Celtics haven't really had consistently. We take a look at Al Horford in the playoffs this past season. He shot under 30% from three. Christoph Porzingis comes in. He shot nearly 40% from three last season. He's averaging also near 23 and 10, which is incredible. Now, the big question mark with Porzingis is health. That's one of the major knocks on Chris Stapps, is his health. He has never played a full NBA season before. And last year, he was dealing with injuries. He, only, he basically played about a half of the season. So the big question is whether or not he can stay healthy. But now, maybe you could keep him, sort of play him like Robert Williams. He doesn't need to play every night. I wouldn't play him back-to-backs because guess what? Al Horford, we don't know what exactly, you know, he's, what, 37, 38 years old? He may even be 40. Uh, we don't know whether or not he may retire or whether or not he's staying. He signed a two-year deal, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he'll be back, I'm my, sure. My guess is... Now they, they set it up so he can rest more. Could you know? exactly that they, they have those three big guys uh, they can rest them they don't all have to play all the time uh, you know if Horford is hot one night they'll let him play a lot of minutes probably but right uh, he, they can afford to, to sit him more and uh Williams is very good I think he, he deserves He's to be out there more he, 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 he has had injuries, some injuries though. but he he was better this this past year in terms of health wise well in the playoffs once again he was a little banged up by injuries but now you have three big men. Like you said, you can rotate. Maybe only uh, Chris Stops, Porzingis, and Robert Williams play. Then you have Al Horford, so you can have Al Horford and just Robert Williams. You have a blend of, of pretty mm-hmm. good centers there who all have different as, uh, different uh, parts that they bring to the Celtics. Al Horford is, is a pretty good shooter, and he also brings a lot of defense, but he's also aging. Robert Williams brings you primarily defense and interior scoring. 
Christos Porzingis may be lacking on the defense, but he can give you outside scoring and can drive to the paint and get you fouls and get you interior scoring. So each of them bring different things to the table. Let's talk about the Marcus Smart uh, version of this now. I said recently I would give up Marcus Smart because you already have enough defense on the Celtics anyway. You have Jalen Brown as a pretty good defender. Jason Tatum's a pretty good defender. You have Robert Williams and Al Horford. Now you're bringing Christos Porzingis. You still have Derek White. You still have pieces that play really good defense. Mm -hmm. Marcus Smart, yes, he was a defensive player of the year. Yes, he is a huge part to the Celtics culture. He was blown away by this trade. He was shocked and said he wanted to retire as a Celtic, reportedly. But you already have enough defense on that team. Malcolm Brogdon, I wouldn't have given up. Personally, I thought he should have started over Marcus Smart this past season, or at least been with him in the starting lineup. He's a much better three-point shooter. He shot 44%, almost 50% from the floor. He's a better free-throw shooter. He he just won sixth man of the year. So he actually gives you, he doesn't give you as much defensive performance as Marcus Smart, or maybe as much hard on defense as Marcus Smart does, but he's a better offensive asset, and with Missoula's mindset, that got them the highest offensive rating, I believe, in Celtics history, in their franchise's history, you had another. You, you keep an offensive piece that allowed you mm-hmm. to be at that highest offensive rating mm-hmm. in your franchise's history. So, Ty, Tyus Jones, you know, efficiency-wise for, for the, the Grizzlies, when John Morant was out, they were actually more efficient on offense with Tyus Jones in the starting lineup, which was quite interesting. But he's also just, he's, based on just the line, He's a he's a pretty decent shooter, but he's His mainly points like, per game and nothing. He's yeah. he's mainly like a sixth man, seventh man, could push to eighth man. The Wizards they're rebuilding, they're figuring stuff out. I, I don't you understand. Know, That's one thing I want to talk about for just a minute. What are the Wizards doing? I can't understand it. I mean, they got Jordan Poole. He's a poor defender. Had a kind of a, a so-so season last year. Twenty points a game. Uh, some question marks there. They gave up. You know they gave up a lot to get him, and right. they and and they they got rid of Porzingis, who was a looks like a budding uh, star, right? Uh, based on his stats last year, they got rid of Bo, uh, Beal, who's one of the better guards in the league. And uh, what did they get in return? They got nothing really. I don't think they got much at all. What are they doing? They just going to tank for a few years and try to build through the draft? I don't know. I don't get it. They have a brand new front office. Seems like these guys, I don't know whether they're really thinking about it, thinking hard about what they're doing. I don't understand it. It's interesting to think. I mean, they. I mean, first of all, they weren't really good this season anyway. Uh, I think the Bradley Beal thing was more of a respect thing. Like, you're, you're, we're not going to win a championship anytime soon. We'll give you an opportunity to compete for a championship. Same thing with Chris Paul. They weren't going to, you know, hold Chris Paul hostage on I the Wizards. I know he was just part. He was on his right. way somewhere else when he went through no, yeah, the no. Wizards. Yeah. yeah, immediately it was reported that Chris Paul most likely be rerouted. And, and like I said, the Clippers, uh, it seemed like a reunion with the Clippers was interesting. The Lakers even voiced their interest. I thought the Celtics made the most sense. Um, but when he went to the Warriors, they got, you know, it was it was absurd. The Warriors only get, well. First of all, they they got a draft pick. Uh, they 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 picked someone. They picked like a Clay Thompson type player last night with the pick that they got from this trade, which is interesting. Um, so who knows? You know, with Clay Thompson, I'm not too sure. But the Wizards, they were they were I have it right from they were the 12th team in the East. That's probably where they're going to be next year. Maybe even lower. I think it'd be lower. Maybe even lower. It should be lower. Probably lower. They had Pazingas had a good year. Yeah. Right? They're not going to have a big guy like that next year. That is true. Uh, I don't know who they're going to get. They, they Right now, their team doesn't have really much of anyone now. They got rid of all the good players. Right. So, so what are they doing? I don't understand it. Uh, they're in re- total rebuild, I guess that. But it's going to be many years of rebuild. I think their Maybe. fans are going to be uh, waiting a long time to see them get uh, even close to the playoffs. Well, the Wizards historically have never really been, you know, a tremendous franchise. They really haven't. I mean, the last time you really saw a lot of Wizards success was when they uh, was about, you know, seven years ago, uh, back 2016-17, when they made the Eastern Conference semifinals. But, you know, in, let's see, in the 21st century, that's the farthest as they ever got. And they got there uh, four times over the course of, of 23 years. 
But in in the history, they may, they they've won one finals back in seventy seven. Yeah, historically, Wes Unseld. Historically, this has not been a tremendous franchise, at least within the past you know thirty years, give or take. Yeah. So my guess is, you know, new new uh, heads up there. You know, my guess is this team is probably going to be, like I said, 12th uh, in the East or below. Uh, I don't think magic will happen, truthfully. I don't think they're going to get a bunch of guys, young guys here, uh, you know, Tyus Jones, and say, oh, yeah, we're just going to absolutely dominate the East or whatever. It, it isn't Tyus gonna Jones is not going to take them to the, the championship, that's for sure. I, I could agree He's with that. He's a role player. The ba- ba- yeah, basically. Uh, I mean, they gave up a lot to get a role player. Yeah. I mean, that's not going to cost them much. Maybe that's uh, just dumping all the salaries. I, I guess that's maybe what they're doing. But uh, they're going to be, I, I just think they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league next year. I wonder what you're thinking about this. I, I said in, in our prior topic with Chris Paul how Chris Paul brings culture, and that's what the Celtic, and that, that's what uh, the, the Warriors needed at, at this current time. Marcus Smart brings that same energy, mentality, and loyalty that a Chris Paul type would. Yeah, and that right, could hurt the Celtics. Well, I'm, probably I'll, help Memphis. That's what I was going to ask you. With John Moran dealing with his his situation and sort of going against the team with Dylan Brooks, you know, he got you know excommunicated out of the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies said, "Do not come back. We are not re-signing you." This team is sort of in limbo with you know how the culture will be. Could Marcus Smart be that type of player to bring that you know, I think toughness so. mentality? He's a, he was and a maturity? leader. He's a leader for the Celtics. Right. An emotional leader, too. Uh, a soul of the team. They called him the soul of the team, the heart of the team. Right. And uh, to lose that, it could be big for the Celtics. We'll see. So you, uh, you think Marcus Smart will have an impact culture wise? I do. A positive one for the Grizzlies. Yeah, so I think that's uh, important. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.